Hello. Always oh, our, our, our most frequent guest, John Mulaney. Did I beat, uh, was it Martha Stewart? Yeah, I think you just tipped ahead of Martha Stewart uh, again. Uh, uh, back and forth, yes. back and forth. It, 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 the ballet continues. <laughs> Now, uh, obviously, uh, you were following the presidential campaigns. You had a great bit about Trump way before, years before he was pretending to run for president. Yes. He was still an odd person back then. Yes. This was in 2007 when he was just doing Celebrity Apprentice. And it was like, oh, that's about the weirdest he'll ever be. And then he <laughs> topped that. Yeah, he really did. No, but I said, I'm repeating myself, but what I said back then was that uh, to me, like, Trump is not a rich man. Donald Trump is like what a hobo imagines a rich man to be. <laughs> like, Trump was walking around under an underpass and he heard some guy like, oh, as soon as my number comes in, I'm gonna put up tall buildings with my name on them. I'll have fine golden hair. <laughs> and a TV show where I fire Gene Simmons with my children. And Trump was like, that is how I will live my life. <laughs> like, what is your me, take on this so far? Well, it's in keeping with him, because when it, he makes a decision, he must think to himself, like, what would a cartoon rich person do? <laughs> Run for president. Neither of us can sing a lick. Not a bit. Yeah. And we uh, had to, for uh, the incredible uh, composer for this, uh, Eli, Yes. we would sing into our iPhones and then just send him us singing. Yes, and what, what I would do is I would take a melody that already existed and was uh, copywritten, and then I would add my own words, and I'd go, how about this? And Eli would say, uh, well, that's already a song. <laughs> and he had to listen to me sing, so I have all these voice memos of me. We actually have a voice memo just to give people a sense of exactly how, how dire, yeah. how dire this was for, uh, for poor, let's, let's take a listen. I, I'm legit embarrassed. Hello, Eli. Uh, it's Mulaney. I'm losing my voice uh, on tour, so I was picturing it like this. You don't own any land, just a box in the sky. <laughs> your neighbor's cooking kasha and your other neighbor died. When you moved in, you felt lucky, but that time is forgot. But you'd never give up your spot at the co-op. <laughs> wow, that was bad, but I did get it all out. Ooh. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> okay. Now, you all know this. <laughs> But my grandmother and Seth's mom were in a local production in Marblehead, Massachusetts of a hospital benefit musical <laughs> review. Stay with me. <laughs> and it was directed by a young Tommy Toon. Yeah. And it was called Pills of Poppin'. And it, sa it saved the hospital. <laughs> so it's no laughing matter. <laughs> but, you know, you've talked to your mom about it. I've talked to my Nana many times. It, New England stories always sound fake. Yeah. You know, they sound like limericks, you know, like... <laughs> Like, a man named Tommy Toon came to town to <laughs> save the hospital. You're like, did So I said, I go up to him, I go, hey, you're Tommy Toon. And he, he was, so he said, yeah. And I said, I said, my Nana was in Pills of Poppin', which you directed. He goes, oh, Pills of Poppin' in Marblehead, Massachusetts. <laughs> and I was like, it's real. The thing that you think would be the most fun to host would be the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Yes, that is the only truly fun award show. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you all watch the HBO uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction annually? No? Okay, absolutely <laughs> no one. Um, it, it happens every year, or does it? I'm not sure. If it, if it didn't, no one would notice. Uh, they induct uh, about like a half dozen ungrateful bands <laughs> into an association no one ever asked for in Cleveland. And if I could describe it, uh, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, think of it like a wedding if every speech was given by the bride's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> like, every band comes in with uh, some old grievance, and all their speeches are just filled with bile from, like, 30 years before about, like, equipment vans or something. And, like, the Golden Globes, the Oscars. The Oscars had a big, weird thing happen last year. That's one glitch. That's on a night where each winner does not know until the moment the envelope opens that they've won. Then they have to go give a speech in front of 10 million people. That should have millions of glitches. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction bands know for months <laughs> that they're going to be inducted <laughs> and that they have to give a speech. They blow it every year. <laughs> they all get up there. They don't know how to stand. They've been standing on stage for 20 years and they're just like side to the podium <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I guess, you know. Look, if you're gonna have a Hall of Fame, which we think is BS, they always undercut the night right away. And we're like, we don't want this. This was for you. 
I heard that someone asked you why comedians make fun of Florida when you yes. were in Florida. I met a very nice uh, young woman, 16-year-old girl, uh, came up to me after the show. And she said, I want to be a comedy writer. I want to write at SNL. And I said, I used to write there. And she said, I know. That's why I'm talking to you about it. And <laughs> she said, why do uh, comedians always go after Florida? And I was like, huh, that's a good point. <laughs> we kind of do. She's like, yes, you do. She said, there was a Jeremy Renner sketch when he hosted SNL where he played the mayor of Tampa. <laughs> yeah. And when he said, I'm the mayor of Tampa, everyone <laughs> laughed automatically. <laughs> and I said to her, like, I said, well, it's not fair that we laugh at Florida. I said, comedy writers are often lazy. And so it's like a good example of a place when you need, you know, if you had a lot of paper towels, I'd be like, hey, Seth, what are you, Costco? You know, <laughs> not a good joke, not a good joke, but it's easy, right? Uh, yeah. So Florida is the Costco of upsetting people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you, like, it's just everything at once. You'd never make Florida on purpose. <laughs> You'd never put it together like, like if it was a dinner party, you wouldn't be like, hey, you know who we should invite? A bunch of elderly Jewish people <laughs> and some really cool gay people from South Beach and a bunch of conservative Cubans and a uh, woman uh, that looks like Brett the Hitman Hart driving a fan boat <laughs> and a possum and an alligator and uh, 12 serial killers <laughs> and the richest people in the world trying not to pay taxes. <laughs> and at the end of the dinner party, they decide who the president is. Do you and College House wrote this years ago. Yeah, and, and then, you didn't pick it. Uh, I, uh, you were the head of writing. I was the head of writing, but I thought, I remember saying, like, I'm no. like, save it for when he comes back. <laughs> um, I'll wait till one of these writers <laughs> improbably hosts. Uh, you were a Les Mis fan uh, as a child. So this was, uh, I should point out, the sketch was called Diner Lobster. Yes. And uh, it, was, uh, it was to the Les Mis soundtrack. Yes, it was about a, uh, a diner that serves lobster, as some in New York do. Someone finally orders the lobster, and we uh, bring out the lobster, who's uh, Keenan, playing a Jean Valjean type. He's facing <laughs> death. Uh, he's lived in the diner for 40 years. And the only music to accompany that is uh, Les Miserables. Uh, <laughs> so what we did was we wrote it um, by listening to the Les Mis soundtrack, and then we changed the words of the songs, <laughs> and we made them about being a lobster. <laughs> That's sketch writing. And that was at the table uh, in 2010. Yeah. And I remember it was done, and it wasn't like you were mad, but everyone was just like, guys. <laughs> and, then we, and then we moved on. And now it's on TV. Who'd you write it for? Do you remember who you originally wrote it for? Um, I think Galifianakis was the host. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, I think you uh, elevated it. Um, yeah. I still do Gavroche for my wife, and, uh, and she hates it. And uh, she hates my rendition of it, and <laughs> she really doesn't like it. And it's, um, and I know it's not good, and I know that it was funny when we started dating, and I know that it's not funny anymore. Because uh, I'll go like, good evening, dear Inspector, lovely evening, my dear. Da -na -na. I know this man, my friend, his name's Inspector Javert. And Anna once went, wait a minute, you just tipped two different hats. <laughs> A lot of you probably try to guess our politics, yeah. you know? Yeah, you know, people look at us, they go, oh, you know, they probably support, you know, Ber Bernard. Why would we vote for Bernard? What do you mean, Bernard? Oh, but they know, you guys know him as Bernie Sanders. Bernard, our dear old friend, Bernard. Bernard? Why do they know him as Bernard, Bernie? Bernard is running for president. Bernard is running? <laughs> the president of what? The, the Band-Aid on Forehead <laughs> Society? No. No, he's running for president of the United States. Bernard? Yeah. Our Bernard? Bernard's Why don't you just vote for him? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> no, we, we, would, we, would, we, we go back with guy. Bernard. We know we go back to, with Bernie Sanders to the, the, the our days in, in Vermont. You know, we were we were known as a political action group. We were known as the Burlington Three. Oh. And we were responsible for the bombing of the original Burlington Coat Factory. <laughs> But now it's still, you know, I still deal with him because I'm very involved in the Occupy Walgreens movement. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I hate the 1%. <laughs> I love whole milk. Oh, boy. I'm sick of these right-wingers, though. Let me say something that please, no one else is saying. Please do. I'm sick of these right-wingers. And the only one I would vote for is Ted Cruz. I like him because his face looks like the whole movie Dick Tracy pushed together. <laughs> 
you were out there. You were out there. You were so funny at the oh, White House. Thank you, guys. Responded. That's very kind. Yeah. You were being humorous. Yeah. And what I love, I love the joke yeah. where you attacked the <laughs> Trump, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And then I remember, you know, remember yeah. you made fun of him. Yeah. And then you got to him, you know, the whole. Yeah. And then he waited six years. Yeah. And now he's running for president. Yeah. And he is just a McDonald's burp away from destroying <laughs> the world. Yeah. So. That was you, dude. That was you, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Guys. You're like the guy that didn't buy Hitler's paintings. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, OK, I'll try Plan B. Yeah. Um, I want to. I was so exciting. I was watching the Emmys, and you won the Emmy for this wonderful special that I was oh, lucky enough you. to see at Radio City. That was, how was that night? It was, um, I was totally, totally surprised. It was amazing and extremely flattering but I was just shocked to win. And uh, I'd you know, been before, and sometimes it's not uh, fun. Uh, so I was sitting there like, why do we do this every year? Why do we come to this? And then they said my name, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is true love. Uh, I was very happy because it cut to you, and Dan Levy, who is a dear friend of yours, was your date for the night. The world's funniest comedian Dan Levy was my date for the night. And yes. I'm uh, lucky enough to know him as well. And it was really. A genuine moment of friendship from Dan uh, when you won. And uh, there he is next to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's also yeah. our friend Michelle yeah, Wolf, Michelle who's genuinely Wolf. happy yes. for you. Look at Dan and I, that is like um, the, that is a, the typical like Catholic and Jew <laughs> hearing good news. <laughs> <laughs> Him like, wow! And I'm like, okay, don't get too proud. <laughs>